Saturn and Jupiter are impressive, even in modest telescopes. But about every 20 or so years, they pass each other in the sky. And if you look up in the sky now, which is uh, a few days before Christmas in 2020, this is what you will see. This is just so rare. That, the bright one is Jupiter. And the one right next to it, which you can barely see on the fainter one on the right, is Saturn. To have them this close in the sky is rare. And this is what they look like through the telescope. There you go. Let's turn the brightness all the way down. And maybe try a little bit of focusing. Ah. Oh. There you go. That's just live from the eyepiece. If I turn the brightness all the way up, you see the moon's Jupiter. If I turn it all the way down, you... Oh, let me lose the focus. Yeah, you see that Jupiter is much brighter than Saturn. Now, I've always wanted to see Jupiter and Saturn in the same field of view like that. But it happens like every 20 or so years, which means that, you know, you only need it to be cloudy or something for a few days around that window. And that's it. You're done for another 20 years. You've got, you've got a lot of waiting. And I'd been so downcast for, for pretty much the last month because we had had solid, cloudy, overcast days. Just a solid month of overcast. And then today, like a miracle, there was a, a, a hole in the clouds. Good enough to actually get a nice view of Jupiter and Saturn together. For the next few days, they will make a spectacular pair together even with binoculars. So I, I strongly recommend taking a look at them whilst you can. Oh, and you might wonder why uh, Jupiter looks like it's on the left here, which is the actual correct way around. But when you were looking at it through the smartphone, through the eyepiece, uh, if you do that, the image is inverted. So um, yeah, that, that's why the images appear differently between uh, the cell phone footage and the camera footage. Cool. So what were you looking at and why is it so rare? Well, that's us there that are huddled around that little sparkling cinder. And these are, of course, all of our planets in our solar system. You've got the outer ones, Uranus, Neptune, the two big boys. Let's see if we can actually rotate around on that. There we go. Super. Let's get them up to the top. So Jupiter is the biggest guy in the solar system. Saturn is the next biggest guy. And everything in the solar system goes, uh, all the orbits go this way around. If, if, you, if you follow the uh, prejudice that uh, you have to look at the solar system from the north, if you look at it from the north, then, uh, yeah, everything goes around anti-clockwise. And the Earth, of course, is much closer to the Sun than either of these guys. So the Earth-Sun distance, uh, astronomers call one astronomical unit. So to Jupiter, it's about five astronomical units, and to Saturn, it's ten astronomical units. And this is... Okay, so first of all, we'll, we'll, you'll notice the two planets are kind of in line. And, you know, if you... Take it. We'll we'll zoom into Earth in a second. In fact, let's do it now. Let's let's go. Let's go to Earth and we'll see what we actually are looking at here. Cool. So this is obviously noon, midday here. This is midnight here. Earth spins counterclockwise if you look at it from the north. Um, and so this is sunset. This is sunset for everyone on Earth. So at sunset. Obviously, you see the sun going down, and shortly after the sun goes down, you see Saturn and Jupiter. Um, so let's see if we can navigate in. Let's just try and center it up. Good. So we should be able to zoom in 
if we're lucky and this is basically what we see at the moment super that's actually very close to what we see at the moment so you've got jupiter in the foreground much closer and saturn in the background and because jupiter is closer goes around the sun quicker it's it's moving this way in the foreground and saturn's going more slowly this way in the background and yeah they they, they don't overtake each other like that very often um for reasons that will come obvious once we um okay let's see if we can actually get out okay we're gonna have to zoom out the old-fashioned way so there's the earth and the moon and super there's our inner planets there's jupiter there's saturn now um the main reason Jupiter looks so bright in the sky compared to Saturn is all planets are basically non-glowing balls. They don't give off any light of their own. They're only illuminated by the sun. So Saturn is about twice as far away. So even if it was the same size, it's only being... The, the light uh, gets fainter as it travels away from a point source as an inverse square. So... Saturn is twice as far away. It's got one quarter of the surface brightness. That's why Saturn looks so pale by comparison. Um, and that's assuming, of course, that they're the same angular size. Jupiter's a bit bigger, which helps out even more. That's why Jupiter is, you know, this, this consistency, consistently bright uh, star, well, uh, apparent star in the sky. Okay, let's see if we can... Good. So we're going to see when the next one of these conjunctions happens. At the moment, uh, you probably can't see that. It says December the 23rd. And so this is Celestia. So I can speed up time, speed up and slow down time here. And if we're lucky, there we go. Everything starts to move. Let's see if we can center. There we go. Excellent. So, no, no. Follow. There we go. Super. So, uh, Jupiter goes around the sun every 10 years. So, it's Jupiter's gone around, once around the sun. That's 10 years. You know, Jupiter was here. Uh, for Earth, of course, it's one year to go around the sun. For Jupiter, it's 10 years. For Saturn, it's 30 years. And you can see that Jupiter is catching up on Saturn again. Uh, once the two are in line with Earth, that's the next conjunction. And it looks to be about there somewhere. Yeah, there you go. It's about there. I've overshot it slightly. Oh my word, this is again horrendous conditions. Um, what would be awesome is if these conjunctions happened. Uh, you'll recall that with Earth, slow time down even. Oh, with Earth, this is daytime. This is nighttime you can see that this is going to be really close to the sun. What you would really want is the Earth to be there uh, when these two planets are in conjunction. Then you'll be able to see it all night. But it looks like the next one of these that's going to happen is in 2040. 20 years. Uh, so, yeah, uh, maybe set your calendar. And I can tell you already, it's going to be in the morning sky. So, uh, midnight, evening sky, morning sky, and that's when you will get the next conjunction in October 2040. So, uh, yeah, set the alarm clock. And if you don't want to wait that long, I strongly recommend you get out there and take a look at it because they'll be good like this for a few days you won't be able to get them actually you might be able to get them in the same field of view in a telescope because you have to use low magnification anyway um you, you can probably do it they'll look spectacular in binoculars you'll see all the moons of jupiter you'll see the planets 
And honestly, when you're in the morning and evening sky, you're close to the horizon. So the the planetary thing is never going to be awesome. Having a good telescope doesn't really help you out here. So binoculars will be good. Otherwise, yeah, grab whatever you can. Even with the naked eye, it's fairly impressive. Otherwise, it's going to be 20 years. So I wish you good luck with that. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And I will see you next time. <laughs>